honestly, I think that the number one reason why we can't reach those health goals is there's a mental block in our past belief system. So something happened along the way, right, in our life that we may be aware of or maybe unaware of, and that allowed us to attach our belief systems to that one incident or incidents, and it's transferred into our current present. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode, and I'm so excited for my next guest. She's a weight loss expert and healthy lifestyle coach, and she's also the owner and CEO of JenniferLuddington.com, and she was the owner, operator, and founder of an elite fitness studio, a yoga studio, and was the founder and creator of a nutrition bar company. So she's done tons of different stuff, and she's also competed in national fitness competitions. So if you want to see her in a bathing suit. You can look at her up on the website. She's got an amazing body. Welcome, my friend, Jennifer Luddington. Oh, thank you for having me, Chantel. I'm so honored to be here. So talk a little bit about your own wellness journey and how it led to health coaching. Yeah, um, I'll try to keep it brief, but it's definitely a story that needs to be shared. And, you know, it's so interesting because I think people looking at me and looking at my career think, oh, this is just what you've always done. You know, you've always been fit or healthy or all these things. And that's actually not true at all. Um, I actually was in school and I wanted to be an attorney. <laughs> um, and I always say that fitness found me, right? I, I didn't go looking for fitness at all. And it found me through a series of, you know, like a lot of adversity, right? Um, I found myself in a marriage that uh, was abusive and I was um, in a very low place. I felt like I was suffocating in my marriage, like I couldn't breathe. And the one thing that I found that really pulled me forward out of that was finding my strength with my body, my physical strength. And once I started getting really connected to going to the gym and finding that power, right, in my physical self, I was able to translate that into the power in my relationship and took my power back and was able to break free of that marriage, even though I had like a baby on my hip, <laughs> right? And, um, you know, venturing out, I, I knew that this was something I wanted to share with other women because if it could do that for me, I felt like, wow, what, what could I do if I brought that to other women? How could that change things for women? How could that change our lives and what we're capable of creating? And um, I did that. And I started my own um, fitness company and um, that kind of led to opening more fitness companies and a yoga studio and then eventually my protein bar company. Um, so that was the start of my journey, Chantel. But I do want to backtrack just a bit for your audience because I think that there's this perception out there that, you know, me, I was standing on fitness stages. I was, you know, a fitness model. I was doing all these things. And it came down to the fact that my self-worth and my value really became attached to the way that I looked. And it became more about the empowerment. It became more about the body than it became about the empowerment, right? And the way that I felt. And so I felt like if I didn't live up to this fitness perfection image that we're fed, that I would lose my credibility in the industry, right? That I would lose um, my clients, that I wouldn't be able to provide for my daughter. And when that started to happen, that transition, it became more of an obsession. And what happened to me during that part of my journey is that beautiful piece of fitness actually turned very dark for me. Mm. And it turned into a uh, massive eating disorders. So here I was, the image of fitness, perfection, and health, preaching all the knowledge that I had, right, to my clients and to, the, you know, to anyone who would listen. But behind the scenes, I was drowning in a river of shame and deceit. And I was living a lie. And I was 100% part of the problem. And that's why now I am 100% committed to being part of the solution. Um, because to be honest, you know, it was about a seven or eight year period, Chantel, where I was suffering in this eating disorder game and I couldn't get a handle on it. And, so and it was bulimia that you had? Oh, it was all that of time. Oh, girl, I was, I think I made up my own eating disorders. It was, <laughs> no, really, it was bad. It was so bad. It was so dark. It was, um, I would starve myself for days and then I would binge eat 
and then I would purge out of guilt and then I would over exercise out of guilt on top of that. So it was overtraining to the point where I had developed an autoimmune disease. My hair was falling out. Um, I wasn't sleeping. I hadn't had a cycle in over seven years. Um, my hormones had completely shut down. And it, it was, it was absolutely tragic, but at the same time I was, I was hiding, right? I was, it was a mask. I was portraying something on the outside that was completely conflicting with my value systems on the inside. Mm. Yeah. When I was between, I guess I was probably like I was in college and I decided to become a math major, which I don't know if you know anything about being a math major, but it, like I was really good in, in math at school, but it like, once you get past calculus, then it goes like calculus two, calculus three, then linear algebra. And then you don't even use numbers anymore. And then it just gets crazy. And I felt like I was just so over my head. And so I was eating for comfort and probably for about three years when I was between like 21 to uh, 20 to like 23, maybe I was bulimic for like three or four years. And I would just eat when I was just so stressed at school. And then I would just throw up and I would just binge and throw up during that time. But I can totally relate because even this past time, you know, I wrote my first edition of Waste Away probably two years ago. I just released my second edition of Waste Away just yes, recently. Yes. Thank you. And, um, you know, one of the things I said in there, which is so true, is that there were, there are times where like, you know, when you write a book on weight loss, right? Like I would gain like three pounds and my husband was like, do you want to go out to dinner? And I'm like, no, I don't want anyone to see me. I've gained three pounds. And he's like, oh my gosh, Chantel. He's like, you look exactly the same to me. I'm like, no, but people are going to know I gained weight, you know? And so you just, you know, you get into this craziness. It's yeah, just... it's very crazy. But I, w I actually want to touch on something you just said, if you don't mind. Yeah. You, we, we made a good point about college. And so I don't know if people realize this, but the statistic in this country for young women in college, the college age years, 27, 27% of college age, age girls are bulimic. Wow. 7%. So it's over one in four. So there's definitely a correlation between that pressure, that stress of, you know, you know, leaving and, and kind of having like this vulnerable space in your life and then being pressured to really get those achievements, those dues, like I've got to check the boxes. And I think that we get overwhelmed and stressed and a lot of young women don't have the tools in order to cope with that. Right. Yes, absolutely. Um, so as women, what do you think are the main factors that keep us from reaching our optimum health? Hmm. So this is so vast. And I love that you asked this question because you said factors. So there's plural here. Um, and honestly, I think that the number one reason why we can't reach those health goals is there's a mental block in our past belief system. So something happened along the way, right, in our life that we may be aware of or maybe unaware of. And that allowed us to attach our belief systems to that one incident or incidents and it's transferred into our current present. And so for an example of that, and I'll, I'm going to give a very personal example. Um, there's a lot of women that are perfectionists, right? And, and we like to control things and we like to do things and we're very high achieving and that's kind of how we roll. And I know that when I was young, my dad is a wonderful dad. I mean, he's fabulous, but he said something to me when I was young that stuck with me. And I'll, t I'll tell you about it and how it shows up in, in preventing us from reaching these things. So he was in the garage fixing his car, right? And I really wanted to help him because I, really, I was really interested in, in mechanics and like how things work. And I went into the garage and I, I wanted to help him. I think it was like seven or eight. And I said, dad, I want to help you. And he says, honey, this isn't for you. You're far too pretty to have to worry about something like this. And that one thing, I can see how it shows up in my life because listen, Chantel, I'm like, well, if I'm pretty, I don't have to be smart. Mm. If I look a certain way, right? If I, if I keep this perfect image, I don't need to know much or I don't need to do that because I can, you know, look a certain way and get a certain thing accomplished. And so there's lots of these little trails, these little breadcrumbs that are left in our childhood and in our young adult 
um, hood that kind of lead us to these limiting beliefs about what we're capable of, what we're worth, those, those limiting beliefs that kind of allow us to have that ceiling, right, where we can't push through it. So the first thing is understanding where those are and understanding how to learn the tools to reframe them, right? That's number one. But I also think with that being said, I think that we get to the point where we get so frustrated because we can't look the way that those girls in magazines and on the covers of, you know, all these fitness publications and in the media look, no matter what we do, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we don't eat or how much we exercise that we literally get so defeated, we just give up. Right. Mm. And so yeah. I think that there's a combination of that is that in our, in, in our culture, we're inundated with these images of what it needs to look like, or it should look like. And when we don't meet that expectation, we start to self-sabotage because it's like, oh, forget it. I'll throw my hands in the air anyway, because it's not going to make a difference. Right. Yeah. So in the newest edition of my book, Waste Away, I talk about how people don't have to deprive themselves when it comes to food, but everyone needs to decide for themselves, like what are their red light, yellow light, and green light foods? Red light and yellow light would be things that like you say, when I eat this, I just feel terrible. So I just don't need it at all. And yellow light's like, I don't feel great. So I'll have it a little bit. Do you have any red light or yellow light foods in your life? Like, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, you know, I talked a little bit about this, but when I was putting myself in that stressful situation with my over-exercise, binge eating, um, uh, kind of vicious cycle, I developed an autoimmune disease. So with an autoimmune disease, um, it, it, you have to be very, very careful um, with what you put into your body. Because now what I put into my body is not so much about my weight and what my weight is going to do, but it's more about the way that I feel because I have a high performing life girl. Like I've, I'm a mom of three. I've got it. My husband's gone a lot. I'm usually a single mom cause he works, you know, out in travels. So I've got to be on my A game. And if I eat food that is going to not make me feel my best, it, it's going to tear down not only my family, but my, my work performance. So I have to really be diligent. So number one thing I do not eat, I mean, I do not eat is white flour. Mm. I do not eat white flour at all. And, and even in circumstances where I, I do preach moderation, for me, it's, it's not so much about moderation as, as it is about the way that I feel. So yeah. if I, even if I have a little bit of that, Chantal, I know it's going to throw me. Right. So I will not eat it. I, I will not eat it. The second thing I would say, and this is still red light, is um, I, I really avoid gluten, like at all costs. So again, for me, this takes me down fast. So next morning I can feel it. I, I feel like I have a heavy blanket on me. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I feel like I'm very lethargic if I eat it. I feel heavy mm. and cloudy. Like mm. I can't. I can't get my words out the way that I want to, or, mm. um, you know, articulate the way that I need to, to make an impact for people. So I avoid those. I would say that my yellow is, is alcohol, right? So I do like a nice glass of wine once in a while with dinner. I I'm not going to lie, but I will tell you that it affects me. So I moderate that. And I have a very strict rule with wine is that I only drink a glass of wine um, if it's a special occasion or at dinner with friends or in a celebratory situation. So it's got to be very good wine. <laughs> it's got to be a kind of a special circumstance. Otherwise, I really try to avoid um, alcohol. Awesome. Yeah. And you know, I am so excited. I just developed a um, a pill that is basically has HCL pepsin and some digestive enzymes and stuff like that. And so I don't feel great when I eat white flour or gluten, but like when, when I really, really, really want it, I will take a couple of these um, pills that I've developed and it's really just helps with stomach acid to help digest that food and digestive enzymes. And I actually can eat it as long as I don't eat very much and make sure I take those. So I will share that with you and you can try it and just see how it works. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you. Yes, yeah, send me some. I'd be interested in seeing how that would work. 
Okay. So now the question I ask all my guests, like take me through a normal day in the life of Jennifer. Like what did you eat yesterday? When did you eat it? Did you work out? And tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Yeah. So normal day. That's funny because you know, life is an entrepreneur. We never know what's going to happen, but um, I'll take you through yesterday. That'll okay. Be- yeah. Okay. It was a fun day yesterday. So, okay. So just overview for everybody. I don't um, subscribe to forced movement. So what I mean by that is every day I give myself a fitness container. Okay. So Monday through Friday, I get a fitness container. That means there's an hour of my day that I do something. Okay. I don't know what that's going to be because when I wake up, I decide. Mm. Okay. So, but I commit to going five days a week, whether I go up and I walk on the treadmill because I don't have a lot of energy or I do a HIIT workout. It doesn't matter. I go. So yesterday was the day I woke up and I went to my regular time. I go at 6 a.m. every morning. <clears throat> so I got up, I had my morning routine, which is I drink 32 ounces of water as soon as I wake up, literally. And I, I meditate and pray. So I have, it's, it's short, it's only 10 minutes, but it's my time to connect to me. And after that, I get to have coffee after my water's done and my prayer and meditation is done. That's my reward. <laughs> um, and so I have a cup of black coffee and my gym clothes are always sitting at the end of my bed, literally every single night, Monday through Friday. So I throw on my gym clothes and I hit the gym at 6 a.m. So yesterday, after I had my coffee, went to the gym. I did a HIIT workout yesterday because yesterday was kind of a metabolic day. I felt really good when I woke up. And so I did, um, I did eight sprints on the treadmill for 30 seconds each with a recovery. And then I did um, about a 20 minute full body, uh, multi-joint weighted workout. So it took me about an hour yesterday. Um, I came home and I for, for remembered that I, f- <laughs> I didn't have avocados for my smoothie. So I went and got avocados and I ate breakfast around 1045. Um, I don't ever eat early in the morning. It's just water and coffee, black coffee. I, I like to intermittent fast as well. Um, and I usually stop eating at 4.30 or 5 p.m. in the evenings. So I did that. I had that for breakfast. It was an avocado um, vegan-based protein shake that I made with flaxseed, hemp seed, um, spinach. Um, I put a little bit of kale in it because I don't do anything to spike my insulin first thing in the morning or first time I break my fast. So in your smoothie, there's no fruit. It's no. just avocado, spinach. I'd love to get your recipe and put it in the show notes if you don't mind emailing that to us and Michael will add that in. So really important for you guys to listen to this. If you are, when you're breaking your fast, um, this is my recommendation. If you're looking to maintain your body composition and keep your body fat low and your muscle mass high, the last thing you want to do is spike your insulin when you're coming off of a fast. The last. That means anything with a carbohydrate in it. Anything. So if you're putting, if you're one to have your fat, you break your fast at noon and maybe you have a fruit smoothie, stop. Um, stop. It's going to throw your insulin through the roof. I don't care if it's a natural form of sugar or not. It's going to crazy spike your insulin. You don't want that coming off a fast because your body is very susceptible to that after a fast. It's wanting to absorb everything right away. So you want to give it high protein, high fat, no carbohydrate. Okay. So side note, um, never, never, never do that. So that I always preach that with my clients. So after that, I, I got hungry around two 30 yesterday because I had a really good workout. So I had some Brazil nuts. Again, the Brazil nuts are lower in carbohydrates, higher in magnesium. Um, and they're, I have, I have about five or six of those tons of water all day. Um, and then last night for dinner, what did we have? Oh, we had, I did broccoli and I did my broccoli with nutritional yeast, coconut aminos, Lots of olive oil, um, did that with broccoli. Then I had a side salad and we had um, wild salmon last night. Mm. Uh, Copious amounts of Himalayan sea salt and garlic. Mm. And that was it. I had no wine. Um, After that, I drank tea. So um, I used to have a habit of, of doing like a protein shake at night or something like that, but I started intermittent fasting and now I just do uh, herbal tea at night. Um, and then I do not, so it's usually like an eight hour window, right. That I, I eat between no more than that. Maybe six sometimes Chantal. Awesome. So that was my day. I will tell you one thing. It's funny that you said that about Brazil nuts. One of the things I've been doing in my smoothies 
is I've been making Brazil nut milk. And the way that it works, first of all, it's just like almond milk. So I have a great recipe on my website of how to make uh, almond milk, but it's exactly the same. You basically take, you can take a, one cup of Brazil nuts and then put like three cups of water or four cups of water, depending on how much you, you know, how creamy you like it. Mm. But this is the thing. Brazil nuts have literally 988% of the amount of selenium you need. And if your thyroid's not functioning, mm. you need selenium. So that's one thing. It also has magnesium in it. It has zinc in it. It has vitamin E. There's so many benefits of Brazil nuts. So I'm like all of a sudden a huge fan of Brazil nuts. And I just feel like a million bucks when, after I eat it. So just a quick tip, if people are, just make your own. Like I am a big, big believer. I hate when I see people using these almond milks from the store because there's some, there's only one out there that literally, if you look at the jar or the container, it's almond milk and water and that's it. But every other one, it has carrageenan, it has guar gum. I mean, it's just so terrible for your gut and it's just too easy to make. You get a Vitamix, you put one part nut, four parts water and blend it. You don't have, they all say you need to soak it and all this, you blend it up and then you strain it. It's that easy. I have tons of videos on it if you want to watch it, but it's literally that easy. I agree. We, I was just talking about that exact thing, the Kerrigan, on my um, one of my Instagram stories yesterday because I feel the same way about it. It's like it's simple to make. You can make it with any kind of a nut that you really enjoy. A macadamia nut is a really good one to do too. Yes. Um, so yeah, I love that you shared that, Chantel. Thank you. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far, but as you know, I've interviewed over a thousand women and every time I've watched a thin eater eat, I realize that maintaining a healthy weight is a skill that can be taught and mastered over time. That's why I created a video course that will teach you all the tips that I learned to help me lose over 30 pounds. It's way more powerful to watch the thin eaters than even to listen or to read it. Go to ChantalRayWay.com slash video for a free glimpse. If you're wanting to take yourself to the next level, everyone needs a coach. Every professional player has a coach. We want to come alongside you and help you in your journey. Go to ChantalRayWay.com slash coaching. I just had someone listen to the audiobook three times and she just emailed me and she said by her listening to the audiobook three times, that's what did it. That's what allowed her to really lose the weight. We have an amazing offer for you. It's the second edition of my book, which has tons more information. It has the audiobook, the ebook. It normally runs for $29.99. You can get it today for $4.99. Go to ChantelRayway.com slash deal to get it. Now back to the show. Now um, let's jump into the listener questions and then I want to hear all about some of the different things that you're doing. So let's jump in. This first one's from Karen in Memphis. I'm a 61 year old diabetic. I started intermittent fasting two and a half weeks ago. I lost six pounds, possibly more. I weigh on Saturdays only. My question is about taking supplements. I need to take vitamins, but haven't since I started IF because my window is from 4 to 10 p.m. In the past, my supplements have caused nausea. What do you do about vitamins? I do want to mention at first, I have cut my metformin in half, and now because my blood sugar was dropping, I have cut it out completely. Now my blood sugar is really leveled out. I feel good, but a little tired. Karen in Memphis. Awesome question. Well, congratulations, Karen in Memphis. That's amazing, uh, first of all. And second of all, um, that, that's a very common concern. So you're not alone, number one. Um, I would say with your supplements, I would love to see what you're taking, but I would, I would recommend, I have a few that I always have my clients take with like just, just clockwork, they've got to take it. And sometimes the nausea is because you're doing all of them at once. So and they need to be spread out. And sometimes the nausea comes from iron. So I have a solution from that. A lot of times iron really messes up women's stomachs and makes you feel nauseous. So I ask my clients that in their first meal, right? The first meal of the day, they take their omega threes. This is what I, this is what I recommend women take omega threes, ferritin, 
Ferritin is the byproduct of iron, which gets stored in our body. And it's very important for women to take, especially if you're in childbearing years, okay? So ferritin. Also, if you don't have enough iron stores or ferritin stores in your body, you can actually strip the calcium out of your bones, which can lead to osteoporosis later in life. So make sure you're getting your ferritin. So omega-3s on your first meal, ferritin on your first meal, and then vitamin D. Vitamin D is a must. You've got to take vitamin D. I recommend at least 5,000 IUs per day. Of course, check with your doctor, but that would be my recommendation to start. I personally take 10 every day, um, but that's where I would start. Now, in the evening, what I would do is I would also take another dose of your omega-3s. Listen, you can't get enough of these, you guys. You've got to take them for anti-inflammation. It, it's a great thing for you to have in your, in your life. So in the evening meal, I would take your omega-3s, a multivitamin that has boron in it, very important to make sure it's got boron in it and selenium. I would take another dose of, um, what I would take is, is uh, what, what was I gonna say? Oh, magnesium. So magnesium at night is really important because it relaxes your muscular system, your nervous system, and it helps you sleep better. So I would split it like that so that you could not get that nausea and still get the benefits of what you need to be taking. So another thing when you're intermittent fasting, if you're tired, look at what you're eating during your window. Because sometimes as women, we try to skimp, right? We try to skimp on the fat. We try to skimp on the protein portions because we're trying to you know, keep our weight down or whatever that looks like. But really pay attention to what you're eating during that window. Making sure you're getting enough fat and enough protein is key to keeping your energy high when you're intermittent fasting. So tell people a little bit about what is the difference between an iron supplement and a ferritin supplement? Yeah. So the ferritin is the broken down version that your body actually stores. So iron has to be broken down into your system in order to store it. So the iron, that's why it makes your, your stomach a little bit nauseous. It's doing a lot of work to break that down. So what happens is the ferritin skips a step. Okay, so it's the stored product, byproduct of iron that we actually need. So the reason we even take iron in the first place is to get those ferritin stores. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I am, I am ferritin deficient. And when I go get my blood work done, always my ferritin is low, but my iron numbers are okay. Mm -hmm. And um you know, ferritin is the main form in which iron is stored in the body and the amount of ferritin, which is in the blood reflects kind of like the total iron, which is available in your body. And so I think that's really good that you're talking about that, that you can take a ferritin supplement, not just, um, an iron supplement. And take it with vitamin C. Um, that's why the multivitamin, taking the multivitamin is really important because vitamin C is really important for the absorption. Yes. Yes. And that's why I'm creating my own supplement line because the th one of the other reasons of why this lady might be getting sick is because if you are taking a whole food supplement, so like I'm creating a whole food supplement line, which literally has whole foods in it into a capsule. So like if you take a vitamin and you're now feeling nauseous, it's because it's not whole food supplements. And yes. so- um, I agree. I think vitamin C, I've been actually taking, um, I was just taking massive amounts of vitamin C, but now I've been actually taking vitamin C in power, powder form and it has like camu camu in it. And so it's really just made a huge difference. All right, let's jump into the next question. Mary in Boise. I started doing IF a few months ago. I tried to have coffee in the morning and wait to eat until two, but I got so tired I could hardly stay awake. Then I tried to have a protein shake with blueberries in the morning and wait to eat between two or three. This seemed to work. Then I got hungry at seven. My concern is being extremely tired to the point that I can't even pick up my feet. <laughs> Any insight, Mary and Boise. Hi, Mary and Boise. I am a Boise girl too, so hey. <laughs> That's uh, cool. Yeah, that is cool. So listen, Mary, this is the thing. There's some things we need to look at. When your body is starting to shift and you're starting getting into a ketogenic state or when your body is shifting into not burning carbohydrates for fuel, something happens in your metabolism. So when your body has been a sugar burner 
for a very long time, most of us are in this country and culture, when your body is, a, is used to being a sugar burner with this readily available fuel source called glucose, right? When we have to shift that, and rely on our body to shift into a different metabolic process of becoming a fat burner, this does take a bit of time for your body to adjust to. And you start to feel a little bit fatigued during the transition. Okay, so this is natural and normal. So I don't want you to feel like there's something wrong with you or it's not working. It actually is working because your body is working hard to shift and adjust the way that it processes food as fuel. Okay, so that it's a good thing. Okay, but in the interim, we can do some things to mitigate how we're feeling so that we can get a little bit more energy and make sure that we're not feeling so heavy and tired. So this is what I would like you to try. I am a big proponent of Himalayan sea salt. So the, the thing here that people don't understand is salt is your friend, not table salt, not the iodized stuff you buy. You want to get the good quality pink Himalayan sea salt. This is key to restoring your energy. So the electrolyte balance in your body is important and I'll tell you why. When you're fasting, when you're not eating a lot of carbohydrates, what happens is your body is depleting itself of water because carbohydrate molecules hold, and glucose molecules hold water. So it keeps our body hydrated in a sense. So when you are depleting yourself of carbohydrates or going longer periods without food, I'm sorry, that was That's oh, okay. <laughs> going longer periods without food, what happens is your water starts to get to depleted and your electrolytes start to be depleted, which absolutely cause you to feel tired and fatigue. So the most important thing you can do when you're going to this intermittent fasting and you're starting this transition, I coach my clients on a quarter teaspoon of sodium or salt, Himalayan pink sea salt, every morning every morning. So this is what I would recommend. And it doesn't taste good to have salt water, right? Nobody likes salt water. <laughs> but what I would recommend is as you're increasing your water, increase your Himalayan pink sea salt intake. Now, before I work out, I forgot to mention this on my days, I take a few of the rocks of sea salt and pop them under my tongue. Hmm. So this is a, an, elect, an electrolyte boost. So you know people take, drink Gatorade and they drink all these electrolyte sugary compounds that you hear about. You don't need to do that. All you need is some sea salt. It's gonna give you the same effect. It's gonna make your body feel amazing and have a lot more energy as long as you're drinking water with it. Okay, so that's the other component. So making sure you're getting 80 to 100 ounces of pure, clean water per day with that Himalayan pink sea salt, at least a quarter teaspoon in the morning should keep you feeling much better and more energized through, your project, through the progress of you getting into being a fat burner. Awesome. Well, tell people about your new project, the Freedom Project, and talk about your single mom scholarships. Oh, yeah. Let me talk about the single mom first because that's, okay. my, heart. that's my heart. That's my heart. So I mentioned earlier I was a single mom for um, the first nine years of my daughter's life and um, I did it all by myself. And of course, I had a tribe helping me, but I know how as a single mom, we are in this different position than others are. Like we have a lot of stress. We have a lot of responsibility. Um, sometimes we're not getting the financial help we need. We don't have time to do our own personal growth, to maybe invest in our health and ourself. And we don't, we, we, everything we go goes into buying backpacks and haircuts for our kids and all the things that they need. And we put ourselves last. And in that, we lose our health right? It can start to deteriorate. Um, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to give single moms an opportunity to take their health back, right? To, to not feel the financial strain of having to invest in themselves and rewarding them for saying, look, it's my time. I get to put myself first because when I put myself first, I'm a better mom, right? I'm a better mom when I show up for myself and my health. So I wanted to give women um, an opportunity to apply for my scholarship um, so that they can have the benefits of having a health program um, to live their best life. So every time I launch a program, I sponsor a single mom to come into my program for free. Awesome. And tell us about the Freedom Project. Yeah, so Chantel, you were just featured on the Feed, My Freedom Body Project, which was an online mini series that we did. And we featured over 25 experts in the industry to help women get off the yo-yo diet train and really give them strategy and tactics so that they can break free of this. And so this is the third show I've run. It was free. And I love doing these series because it's an opportunity for women to really get free advice from experts that they would normally not have access to. And I think that that's really powerful when we can 
show up generously and give so that we can all be supported. Um, so it's definitely a passion of mine is sharing these messages that can really help women move them forward. Um, and that transitions into what is actually my group online program, which is called the Freedom Body Project, which is a 10 month comprehensive health and weight loss program where we have a registered nurse on staff, we have a doctor of psychiatry on staff, and we really dig into the, un, the underlying causes that we talked about in the beginning of why you're still on this yo-yo diet cycle. And we get underneath it and we start to understand them, we reframe them and we let them go. And that's why I call it the Freedom Body Project because yes, you get the mechanisms of what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, when to exercise, you get all of that, but the basis of it the framework starts with our mindset. Awesome. JenniferLuddington.com. Everyone go check out her site. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for being on our show today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored that you asked me to be here. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantalRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.